Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope that what I'm going to talk about in this video will help any doubts you may be having if you happen to have an orchid that you would love to get your hands into, clean up and pot up in your preferred media and setup. But there are certain things that are possibly niggling in the back of your mind, causing a few doubts. Maybe this video is exactly what you were needing to give you either the green light or to say hold off before getting into that pot. So we have our gorgeous candidate here, Sopressa is back in the viewfinder because she is a classic example of a situation many of us are faced with. This is a new orchid in my collection. I know she doesn't look the part, but she is a new orchid in my collection and she is growing roots. We have itchy fingers to get into the pot and do our thing. Well, while it is always advisable to wait for new root growth before doing any repotting, you may be starting to think, with the exception of orchids that have degraded media and the roots are rotted anyway. Please check out my video on New Orchids Organic Media Masterclass and How Long Is Too Long, which is what I'm faced with. Sopressa here, How Long Is Too Long In Old Media. Great video, highly recommend that. I will leave both links in the description. Anyway, back to our Sopressa and our example here. To my understanding and the best advice I can give is to leave an orchid alone and work with the media for as long as it is necessary until conditions and temperatures are favorable to make a repot as stress-free as possible and your orchid won't incur any setback. Now, <laughs> looking at Sopressa, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that I am dying to get into this pot, trust me. And about a week ago, I was just going to risk it because look at what she's doing. Compared to when we found her roasting on the pavement in the Spanish afternoon heat of August, look at her comeback. It is phenomenal. Her rescue journey has also been documented on my channel in case you're wondering how she looked when we picked her up from the dumpster and what she's doing now. But... Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's take a moment to do our repot checklist. Well, we've got new roots. Yep, that signals a repot at this point in time. That would be perfect. We've also got old media. And yes, that signals we want to get the new roots from encountering possible issues with that old media and not risk them failing. We've got active growth all around. We've got new leaves, spikes, check, check, check. That is always a great signal for a repot, even though some may say not to repot when the orchid is in spike. Well, while that may be true because we could risk bud blast in the process of a repot while an orchid is in bud, in the case of Sopressa, she's only in spike. So that would not stop us from repotting her. However, I do have an example at the end of the video. I will address it briefly in this video. And at the end of the video, I have a quick clip to back up what I will be saying moving forward. Anyway, we have to stop ourselves and think according to what conditions we are dealing with in our surroundings before our itchy fingers get ahead of themselves. And just because we want to do something that we believe is right, we may need to hold off, take a step back and consider some circumstances. Now, if you have a controlled grow environment that maintains temperature levels above 20 degrees Celsius, and plenty of light for at least 10 hours, you are okay to repot no matter the time of year. Because seasonal orchid care is not about what we have as our four seasons. Instead, seasonal orchid care is broken down into three seasons, which is active growth, blooming, and resting. That includes environments and climates where there's only two seasons, which is the rainy and the non-rainy season. Our orchid care needs to be determined by their three seasons, active growth, blooming, and resting. So you can honor everything you need to do with your orchid if your conditions remain consistent in accordance to the orchid's needs. But if you are in a situation like myself, where your temperatures drop below the minimum temperature tolerance of the orchid in question, my example being this Phalaenopsis and her happy place is anything from 20 degrees Celsius and above, then no matter what the orchid is doing, no matter the media it is currently in, and no matter the media or setup that you have intended for her, even if you're sticking with organic media, which will be nice and fresh, if your temperatures will go lower than her liking, she is not going to get through the repot without showing signs of stress and possibly incur root loss at some point. 
In addition to that, if you cannot provide the minimum of 10 hours of light that the orchid requires to be able to continue with her active growth after the repot, then the stress will compound itself and the orchid will slow her current active growth to save energy and stick to surviving as opposed to thriving. The result of that being the orchid will slow down whatever it is doing right now and that is the root growth which we are actually trying to get into fresh media. Add to that here in my case, my orchid is also spiking, not just throwing out two spikes but also branching on an older spike. Now producing blooms will be her main focus especially if she does not have the ideal temperatures and light to overcome the stress of a repot. Her push to bloom will take precedence and the active root growth that I want to take advantage of will stop. Any orchid that is under duress will try to bloom as a priority in an attempt to survive and in order for that to happen, the energy will be concentrated on the spike development as opposed to roots or vegetative growth. Now, quite rightly so, you may be thinking that I'm also not repotting this orchid because she is a rescue. She went through some serious stress and of course now is not the time to repot. However, if I still had my installation up and running with artificial lights and the heat mats on, then at this stage, no matter the calendar season, I would repot and things will be just fine, no matter her recent history. But either I'm hearing voices or you are actually thinking, hello, she is in spike and that would be a point of not repotting either. Well, that is not the reason, as my clip at the end will show you. While an orchid is in spike, it is okay to repot, but if she were already in bud and I would proceed with a repot, then it is possible that I would prompt bud blast. Seeing as she's not at the bud stage, repotting her at this stage would not be a problem at all. Now back to the when and why of not repotting based on conditions, as much as I hate not being able to take advantage of everything I see going on in the pot, this is not the time to repot her. And if you're in any doubt about your situation, know that 10 hours of light minimum with temperatures above 20 degrees Celsius are the two basic requirements to proceed with a repot during our winter months. Some orchids are continuous growers and repotting in winter is the fun part of the hobby because we can still play with our orchids while it is nasty outside, but not under every circumstance. So I shall wait until June or July 2023 to clean this orchid up and get her into my preferred setup, even if she's not growing new roots at that time. But I will have nice, consistent and warm temperatures during that time of year and more than 10 hours of good light, which are the two key factors for repotting any orchid. Should she be extending her roots at that time? Then that is a bonus. I'm still hearing voices and I'm going to address them because you may have one last lingering thought. You may be thinking to yourself, I have Phalaenopsis orchids and they're doing fine with lower temperatures. And you're right. I too have Phalaenopsis orchids doing great and my temperatures drop to 14 degrees Celsius indoors and they are doing fine. But the difference is they are established. They can handle the stress factors of lower temperatures because of the fact that they are established. A repot is a massive stress factor which does not need to be exacerbated by stressful temperatures and inadequate light, which the clip at the end will show you. I am repositioning an established phalaenopsis so that the new roots grow straight into the pot and she's growing two spikes, but she has been in the setup for years and for that reason I can reposition this time of year. And I hope all of that makes sense and if I didn't finish a train of thought, please take advantage of the comments. So besides hoping that this was helpful during this time of year when people may be going around gifting orchids for the holidays, or you should come across some great deals on the sales tables, now you know how to proceed. Check the description for those two videos that I have linked and hey, <laughs> it gave me an opportunity to update you on the meteoric recovery of my beautiful ugly duckling, Sorpresa. I think she deserves a like. <laughs> Please like the video because Sorpresa is doing so great. We don't want to stop the momentum. So she is still in her old media, but she's doing absolutely fantastic. 
me thinks that warrants a like on this video and sharing it with anyone else who has orchids doing their thing and is also wondering what should I do now? Do not stop the positive momentum of Suppressor. Just hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because we are on Suppressor Bloom Watch. If you haven't already subscribed and you want to join in with the predictions list of what her blooms will be like, there is still time and we shall get around to seeing what her blooms are like and revisit that list of predictions as to her color in 2023. Oh my goodness, time flies, hey? So make sure to let me know if you haven't already put your predictions in. Let me know that in the comments here as well and let's add to that list. And then we shall have one video with a big reveal. What color blooms does Sopresa have? 2023. Oh well, moving on. Let me know if you have any questions or just say hi. Your comments make my coffee taste so much better. Have a fabulous day on that one condition though. Please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.